Well, good afternoon on this uh, fine afternoon in uh, sunny Bristol. I've uh, taken a trip down to the Clifton Suspension Bridge here in Bristol, where we're staying at the moment. And uh, I thought that uh, since I'm uh, away from my workshop, um, this would make a suitable backdrop uh, for introduction to part three of making a homemade lathe. A uh, beautiful structure here was designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, uh, completed after his death in 1864 and uh, has been uh, in use since then. So amazing structure. So in part three I'm going to be discussing um, or showing you some examples of uh, patterns which I used for casting. Uh, I didn't produce the castings myself, I had those produced um, by a local foundry, uh, or a couple of foundries in fact, and um, that for me was a great way of um, uh, producing some of the structure. For me fabrication wasn't really easy, casting, was a, a, a casting followed by machining was a much better option. So I want to show you some of those uh, uh, patterns and uh, afterwards um, I'm going to show you some examples of um, items I've produced on the lathe uh, and the reason for doing that is to illustrate that um, a lathe like this, a homemade lathe, can indeed be a practical um, device, a practical machine for, um, for working on and not just uh, a means to its own end. Uh, which is sometimes, I think, the case with uh, homemade items. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, if you do, uh, give me a thumbs up, and uh, also consider subscribing for, for more uh, videos to come. Thank you. Now underneath the, the, the stand is a handy cupboard, and I've got all sorts of bits and pieces in here which basically have to do with the, uh, uh, with the construction of this. I've got... Uh, one of the first things I made was uh, this angle plate, which I think you've seen in use. This is the, the pattern for that. Um, I made a uh, scribing block, which I used for marking out. These were all necessary in preparation for making the lathe itself. Uh, this is an important casting. Before I had a face plate, before I had a chuck, this was how I mounted my work. And um, this was made out of aluminium because in the early stages uh, machining was a challenge when the lathe wasn't set up properly and so aluminium was easier to machine so I made this kind of temporary uh, back plate stroke face plate out of aluminium and the feature of it which is a little bit unorthodox is it's merely clamped on the on the um, on the mandrel. So remember at the early stages I just had the mandrel basically machined in somebody else's workshop. Um, I later machined the thread and the register which I'll show you later. So before I could do that I had to have some way of holding the work and, I, and the way I solved that was to make this aluminium casting and mount things off that. Um, what else have we got in here? Um, well I've got other, other bits and pieces. Um, this is the, the first tool post I had. Um, I made that myself, uh, it's a uh, cast iron casting and uh, that was the first tool post and the reason it's deep is because at that stage I didn't have a top slide, it sat directly on the cross slide. Um, this is the first temporary support for mounting the boring bar um, uh, and uh, that was mounted on the lathe, you'll see that in some photographs. Um, this was a device which I made for facing and um, uh, basically it's got a tool in here and it slides and it enables me to cut uh, faces and the whole thing rotates on a mandrel and uh, that was my way of machining faces uh, on a boring bar. Maybe there's a picture of that to show you. Uh, this is my fly cutter which I, uh, I used a lot um, when I was machining a lot of the castings. Um, what else have we got in here? Spare hand wheel which I didn't need. Um, can't remember, oh that was something else. Uh, temporary, temporary cross slide. Um, leech crew, 
is part of the original boring bar which I used for machining the inline machining of the uh, headstock bearings. So uh, there's a photograph of that somewhere which will show you how that worked. There are various other bits and pieces in here, probably too much detail for now. Um, I'll take you upstairs onto the roof because um, the some of these bits were recycled. In fact, uh, this item, um, which was the the temporary plumber blocks for the for the inline boring of the headstock, I'll just take you up onto the roof and I'll show you these castings were recycled and used uh, for my solar stand. So I'll show you that in a minute. It's hot, dripping sweat. Okay, I've come up here onto the roof because I just wanted to show you uh, where my temporary plumber blocks went. They ended up here under my solar stand um, and if I zoom out I think you can see its function. It's, it's basically part of a pivot to enable the stand to rotate and track the sun. So nothing's wasted. Uh, there's another one on the other side. So actually, just incidentally, this is uh, um, my solar installation. Um, I have it because the electricity supply here is very poor. Um, so most of the appliances in our house run off this, uh, including most of the appliances in my workshop, uh, which you've seen in action, except for the Colchester student lathe. That's a three horsepower motor, and it's just a bit too much for this. So uh, this is a tracking system, although it's not tracking at the moment, so it tracks the sun. Normally it tracks the sun morning to evening. That uh, four and a quarter inch lathe was used to, light's not very good here, used to machine this bearing housing. Uh, all done on that, that homemade lathe. Um, this plate underneath, cast iron plate was machined on the lathe. The shaft that goes through the middle is machined on the lathe. Um, these various castings here for the motor drive, uh, they were all machined on that lathe. We're very dirty up here, but just gives you an idea. In fact, almost every turn, yeah, all the turning operations, I think except for one large diameter like this, um, were all done on that lathe. Of course the lathe itself was used to make many of these patterns, those with, uh, with uh, round sections like these, they were all made on that lathe. So this is probably the largest uh, component which um, I've tackled on, on the little four and a quarter inch lathe. Uh, this is a pattern for the bearing housing, which I showed you up on the roof. Um, it uh, is designed to hold a ball bearing um, at this end, and another bearing at the other end. 
and the shaft goes up through the middle and the whole assembly rotates on that. So it's quite, quite a heavy loading if you take into account wind and the weight of the structure. Uh, so an important part of uh, the solar stand, this was machined on, on, on my homemade lathe uh, to give you, well on the end here you can see these are the core prints. Um, that was really important because I wanted to ensure that uh, I had a hollow casting um, so that I could get right in there and start, um, uh, start machining out the, the, the uh, seatings for the bearings rather than having to remove a whole lot of metal. Um, so that saved a lot of uh, expense and time. Um, to give you a rough idea of the dimensions, uh, it's uh, five inches long by four and a half inches across that width and across here it's uh, over six inches. So quite a chunk of uh, cast iron to machine on a lathe of that size. Um, it was possible by taking it slowly and carefully and um, um, it was successful. Another example of um, a project that uh, I undertook with my middle son uh, several years ago on this lathe. Um, it's a small steam plant, uh, a boiler, vertical boiler, um, a small uh, single acting uh, steam engine and a little DC generator uh, with a feed pump. And uh, so all of this was, all of the turn components uh, were machined on this small lathe. And, and all the milling was done on it as well. And here's a smaller oscillating engine as well. Well, that concludes uh, part three of making a homemade lathe. I hope there were some uh, interesting uh, tips uh, and suggestions and maybe just a little bit of inspiration uh, for any of you who are considering undertaking a project like this. I noticed from the uh, YouTube statistics coming in that there are quite a lot of young people watching the channel uh, particularly the uh, videos on making the lathe so um, I just like to suggest uh, and, and uh, put this thought in your mind that um, uh, you know have a go uh, I think the main point that I'm trying to make in these videos is that if you have an idea if you have a vision for um, something like this then don't be put off by uh, the size of the task. Break it down into smaller tasks. Uh, look at the resources you have available to you and see how you can use them to your advantage. And don't be put off by the skills of others who um, have progressed further along the track from you. Um, uh, see what you can do and learn. be willing to learn from your mistakes. I'm not a trained machinist. I did um, an engineering... Um, course and uh, that included an apprenticeship um, which included some machining but most of my machining skills were learned at home so um, be willing to learn and um, have a go and um, uh, just take one step at a time so thank you for joining me once again if you have any ideas for another video uh, if you'd like me to continue on this topic of making a homemade lathe then please make some suggestions and i'll see what i can do